Okay, everybody, thanks for sticking with us, this YouTube playlist on our channel. Appreciate you visiting the channel at all, to be honest. Uh, share with your friends. If you've come this far, share with your friends. Do us a little more solid. Tag these people on Facebook so they know that they're in these videos. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're in the top four. Are they good to start? One minute. And this is Devin Swindles on your right. And Sean... What, give that give that a crack at Sean's last name. What, what do you think, Ryan? Crookshank. We'll go with Crookshank. Crookshank. You've now decided his last name forever. Yeah. Crookshank is definitely something from Harry Potter, not how you pronounce this last name. But, <laughs> but either way... Um, yeah, um, so straight from the streets of Diagon Alley, we have Sean. Oh, yeah. Um, and we have straight from the streets of Rivendell, we have uh, Devin. Yeah, I mean, look at this guy. He's definitely from the Harry Potter universe. I, I that's feel a like Weasley. That's just a Weasley. That's a Weasley. He, he has, like, a, sh a long, thin wand, and it always backfires on him. Look at him. I was at a Harry Potter-themed wedding two weeks ago. Wow, really? Yeah, we all got custom wands. As a as a wedding gift, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, do you still have yours? Yeah, uh, I do. It was ten and a half inch walnut with unicorn tail as the wow. as the innard to it. They, there's you different, fancy. There's different innards. I know that. There's dragon heartstring and one I can't remember. No, phoenix feather. That's what it is. You see these guys staring at us here. They're waiting for us to give them a thumbs up. We'll do it. Yeah, you guys are good to go. They're good, and they'll start. So, it looks like Sean is the higher seed, which... No, he's not. Oh. He has a pre-game action. Okay, okay. He's a pre-game action this card, with, Ryan? A, with a luck counter on that gemstone cavern. Damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel is exactly how I'd put it. Um, this is way better than any... any shiny white sneakers. This is... This can make not just white mana, but any mana. Yeah, Gemstone Caverns, if you don't know, when you're on the draw, you can start with it in play. It kind of functions like a Mox Diamond. You remove any card and get a free land drop. And look at he does Chalice on one on turn one. Yeah, against the Elves deck. Reasonable. Which still doesn't lock it out. There's a lot of a lot of spells the Elves deck can play, but... I'll note, zero Reclamation Sage in the main deck 60. Yeah, um, that's something where you will see it happen with the cord lists. Sometimes they'll have one Rex Sage. We can see a win right here, though. This, this company is dangerous. Yeah, if it finds a Vizier, that just unlocks the whole deck, but it doesn't. Azuri Arstruid is a pretty good replacement for that, though. Wow. So, Devin, with the Elves, this is turn three. He has four Elves in play. This is another About company. to be more. Company, wow. Yeah, untapped the Devoted Drew, which has an additional toughness thanks to the Archdruid. And tapped the two elves that came into play with the Heritage Druid. Wow, this is strong. This is turn three. He has affinity level permanence in play right now. Three lands and five creatures. Yeah, that's a Dwinnin's Elite and a Spellskite. So Six creatures. Even if he has the has a removal spell here, that Spellskite is is a great one of in this deck. <laughs> thought Knot's here. Turn four Thought Knot, way too slow. Yeah, as it was demonstrated by the last match. Yep. Uh, turn three is where you want to be. Um, yeah, this when the Elves deck has draws like this with Heritage Druid, it really does have that affinity feel that you talk about. Um, naturally, it feels just ever so half turn slower, but this is turn four. We're looking at two overruns here. Wow, this is well enough to. To close this game out, if and if it's not, it'll be because we have a, a nice jump block from a thought not zero creatures, um, yeah. which will uh, allow us to have a nice redraw as well. Look at this. This is eight. That that's twenty five damage right there. Elf token's going to represent more devoted druid more. I don't even know what he's thinking about at this point. I mean, yeah, the, the token's going to come in. Too. Sean's so dead. Yeah, there it is. So, uh, yeah, casual casual turn four, 35 damage. Not bad. When you're playing Collected Company on turn three... Two of them. And it unlocks your second Collected Company, <laughs> that's usually the sign that your creature deck has gone off, and it is time to start thinking about what your good sideboard cards are. <laughs> so, so we had about a 10-minute quarterfinal. We've had a four-minute game one of our semifinal. You and I are going to leave when it's still light out. 
I I hope so because I it, it's summer, man. I, I I feel like these players feel the same way. You know, they're yeah. they're trying to get out of here as much as we are. I mean, I see a T-shirt and I see pink hair. If that doesn't scream summer, I don't know what does. Yeah, that that's five seconds of summer. <sighs> yeah. Now the players they're going to their sideboards. Uh, what? is Sean going to do now that he's lost? I mean, he knows his opponent's on else. He already has the Chalice's main deck. What good sideboard cards do you see that'll shore him up here? Well, Chalice, uh, on the same note as Chalice, Ratchet Bomb oh. is a, a good pickup in terms of doing the same type of thing. Spatial Contortion, a lot of people would think um, one-for-ones aren't necessarily the best against the Elves decks, but when you're talking about something that's specifically trying to lean heavier on the combo end of it. Spatial Contortion can really punch a nice hole in that puzzle. And if we get to the point where we're looking at 5 mana and we need a recurrable source of card advantage, um, uh, Sover Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, it, it looks a little better than Reality Smasher, honestly. We're, we're talking about something that's necrotalling and hitting for 6. Yeah, it really it turns does. Turns slower, but, you know... Still doing something in terms of interacting with the opponent, which uh, is definitely on the menu for this matchup for the Eldrazi Desert Tribal deck. Oh my god, yeah, so we, we didn't really get into that, they were they were so fast. Sean Crookshank, if you guys didn't watch his earlier feature match... Uh, against, Where I got ranched. ...against Ryan, yeah, he got really destroyed. It, like, the games took a while, but man, they weren't close. No, no, um, the, the first game, it definitely felt like... I was really far behind. We're talking about a, an Eldrazi deck that doesn't go high on the mana, a lot more aggressive, and has the Ifnir Deadlands mm. off of Urborg to have some late game punch. I mean, it's it's just a waste that happens to uh, kill a, a Kree, a, a key creature here and there, shrink a key creature to keep attacking with your smash over somebody else's potentially. Um, it's a sick card. It's, like, surprising how good that four-mana sorcery... Honestly, five-mana sorcery speed, uh, speed effect is. I mean, it killed a Mirren Crusader against you, or threaded, threatened to. Yeah, it did. It did. Um, it definitely does work against the, the smaller creature decks, of <laughs> which, as it turns out, the uh, they're given the time that it will show itself to be strong in this matchup. The problem is the given the time part yeah. of that. Right. Not going to be an all-star. Now, what might be is like a distended mindbender. Three distended... I mean, if, if it takes collected company and an elf, if you somehow get it out on turn three, I think you can. Yeah. Um, he he is running four spirit guide. Mm. Um, you know, very much understands his deck is trying to do something more along the lines of the Protor deck, the original Eldrazi colorless deck, where it really wants to... Okay, I didn't hit my Eldrazi Temple, uh, but I have to thaw it not on three. I have to smash her on three with a Temple. Really just trying to push the envelope in terms of how quickly it can do things. And the uh, the Chalice is back, it looks like. Yeah, turn two Chalice. A little about, about as good as it was last game. I mean, it's still turn one on the draw, turn two on the play, pretty much the same thing, gonna lock out all the one drops. Yeah, uh, the difference this time being, um, it looks like Devon's one drop this time around is Nettle Sentinel, hmm. so we don't have a lot of the really crazy draws that Heritage Druid unlocks for you. Um, that said, um, if this is gonna be a more reactive hand from Sean, Nettle Sentinel might be the best one drop to have. It, it does beat the fastest. It's not impressive in a lot of senses, but when when you get down to the the mediocre beatdown plan that the, <laughs> the, the deck like falls back on a lot of the time, those two twos from that and Twin Elite definitely add up. So let's see what Devin has here. His opponent did not add to the board on turn three, but he will. He'll play an Arch Druid, and yeah, like you said, these mediocre beats force a dismember. Still taking six, though. Yeah, still taking six total. Um, this can really be undone by one real solid play. Still, um, I'm not sure in terms of... Devin does have some sideboard removal spells that could potentially interact with this thought not coming up. Not in hand, though, not I don't believe. He only has path in his sideboard for straight-up creature removal, but he does have things like Rexage. Yeah, could... Could Rexage the Chalice later on. 
Rexing Revoker too can shut off like an Endbringer, not really answer the five five body, but at least stop it from running away with the game. Yeah, when when you're talking about a deck like Elves, the the goal when you're not really pushing the pace is time. If you have the ability to uh, it looks like the chalice took out one of the sentinels. Mm. Is um now the nettle is when you cast or when it comes into play? So the nettle trigger is a cast trigger. Um Oh boy. Yeah, forget Nettle Sentinel. How about Sky Sovereign? Yeah, the Sky Sovereign, uh, this is about how you drew it up for Sean. Just have some, some interaction turns. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd call a judge too, uh, just because I, I would be like, is this allowed in modern? My opponent's <laughs> playing this, this bonkers standard card against me. Um, He's definitely not supposed to be able to tap five mana. He's supposed to be dead by then, Judge. What's I up? I know. I, I would be. I would want to consult authorities about this too. Um, unfortunately, it is a sky sovereign, and sovereigns tend to be kings and rulers. So that's the ultimate authority, and it looks like it's left unchecked. Could be the same for this game. Yeah. If Devin can't find something like a Rex Age or a cord for a Rex Age now like, somehow assemble the combo out of nowhere, I think he's going to be losing this game. Uh, there is the Phyrexian Revoker in hand, and I believe Kuru is a an activated ability, so we have that going for us. Oh, okay, okay, but leaning on a 2-1 for your entire game plan... No, not when our opponent has the Warping Whales to, uh, to get rid of mm -hmm. that. Um, something, just anything to hold the fort now, as long as, you know, our opponent is... You know, still top decking land. You know, it's Eldrazi decks. They they do they are land and creature decks, and they don't have control over the top of their deck. So there is some option to draw badly and get back into this game for. Oh, there's the warping whale. Ooh, kill the revoker, crew the sky sovereign, boom. Or really, what what sound does a sky sovereign make? I feel like. Um, you ever seen Inception? Like the Hans Zimmer, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Blah, blah. You just know it's coming. Yeah, like the water's coming into the dream. The dream's breaking down. <laughs> Devin's going to get one more chance at the dream, because he's a game three at least, but yeah. game two not yeah. looking so good. Game three on the play, though. That's... That's a big game. And also, Sean has had Chalice turn one every time. Or turn, Chalice turn two, I should say. Yeah, um, the Chalice, I think, in terms of against specifically this version of the Elves deck, um, the modern Elves deck doesn't have the strength necessarily to do the one-mana pure combo type draws right. that you see with Glimpse of Nature legacy decks. Um, so thankfully it's not as big of a beating, but we saw that game. It countered two things. It, it countered a Nettle Sentinel and a Mystic at the end of the game. An, an inconsequential one, but still, it, it is blanking draws. And if you ever get to the point where you chalice on two, oh, yeah. interact chalice four two on four, then then a lot of the decks locked out. You're really only looking at getting things into play from company or playing three drops at that point. Yeah, I mean, chalice is good. It, it feels like chalice right now in modern is not as game over as maybe it once was. Yeah. But it's still pretty hard to beat sometimes, like for an elf deck. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's um, there's still plenty of decks that really fold to a Death Shadow. Um, I would put probably at the top of that list, even though they have Kim Coligon's Command to get rid of it. Mm. Um, if they don't it, cast it right then, though. Yeah, they, they're a deck that's really reliant on Velocity. So having things to get rid of Serum Visions and, you know, just random, you know, Thought Scour. Yeah, Thought Scour. I've, I've seen Sleight of Hand out of them a little bit. Um, stops push. You know what's interesting? Zero Death Shadow decks in the top eight today. Yeah, I, I think people are tired of losing to it and, mm -hmm. and only show up with things that are they're confident are good against it. Uh, if you look at this top eight, I mean, we have two Valakit decks, um, two Eldrazi decks. Burn, which has to be okay against it. Burn's fine against it. Dredge is, is solid. Elves is, I would say... I would say his favorite against. Um, there's definitely versions that are more favorite against Death Shadow when they have Shaman of the Pack, but 
And I think the land destruction deck, um, you know, we're talking about, ooh, that's I, Gemstone Cavern again. again. Uh, then Nettle Sentinel, not exactly what he wanted. Can he do Chalice? Again, he can. No, okay, okay. Phew, Ratchet Bomb. Phew, I was going to flip this table, Ryan. Yeah, that, there's a lot of equipment on this table. Do you want people to know that you were willing to sacrifice that much? Yeah, if it if it if it keeps them from doing turn one chalice against me, yes, it's worth it. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, should like the last match go to game three and we have like another turn three Tron? That would have tilted <laughs> me. I have so many bad memories of losing to Tron. Yeah, well, yeah, I used to play Tron. I'm right there with you. I I would actually apologize to my opponents when I natural Tron them. And wow, look at this. We have the Lotus Petal feeling of the uh, the thought knots here this time around. Takes the Azuri. Yep, leaves with Dwinans, Dwinans, if I'm right. There's definitely one Dwinans and a Heath. I can't see necessarily what the last card is behind the Shine. It does look like Dwinan, though. Well, really? This is not that strong of a draw to Sean. He's not going to be able to attack that well. No, um, it's, oh, this draw this turn was really good, though. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're passing with four up, yeah, you drew company and nothing else. Yeah, I, it's... The scary thing about it here is lining it up against the bomb is going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Ratchet Bomb is on two right now, yeah? Yeah, um, it, it's either on two or one. I think it probably went to two. Oh, declines. Oh, maybe he's just not committing the Dwines Elite into there. That could be a good reason to not play them necessarily, because you lose them and the Devoted Druid. Nice tokens and a Nell Sentinel. Interesting. Uh, this looks like a Temple Garden untapped, though, so I guess it could be a Cord of Calling Exus 3. It could be Cord. Um, find an Azuri. Find an Azuri. Find... I'm wondering what else it could even Revoker? potentially... Stony oh. Silence. Okay. Interesting. So, has to pop that for two. Okay. So, now that unlocks an Elite. All right. And elites can easily block down this Dot Knots here, even through yeah. Deadlands. Yeah, um, Deadland activating as a sorcery is is definitely helpful in terms of. Uh, I mean, it's it's such a good card in um, the games where it's getting incremental value. Anyways, um, it being able to screw up combat math would be a bit crazy on Wizard's part. Wow, is this just a take? I think it might be a take. Um, so. So reasons to do that, let's think. Well, yeah, yeah you have the Pendlehaven on di Okay, okay. So he didn't take it. Now maybe that was a no, correction okay, of the okay. life total, something okay. like that. That would be wild. Yeah. Playing around one removal spell here. Um, there is the opportunity to go dismember spatial distortion, though. Hmm. Um, Sometimes when you're, you know, when you're playing against an opponent, you say, well, if you have the nuts, you have the nuts, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, this definitely is one of those spots. Um, the elf deck is not functioning where it wants to be. It needs um, a strong set of redraws, whether it be Elvish Mystic or Coco, to get um, to really push ahead in this spot. Um, that said, Eldrazi Necro not necessarily pushing too much. Um, so Mimic coming out. A pretty modest addition to the board. Uh, that, not that's not a modest addition though, is it? No, that's adding. Ooh, there's the dismember. Well, okay. That, those cost life, man. I mean, we're still taking the four. All right, we are in Sean's attack phase. Taking an attack for five. Is Devin, he doesn't... Going have to, to five. Yeah, go, okay, going to five. There we go. Deciding what he wants to do in terms of the sizing for this chalice. Does one on one. There are more things that cost one here, so... Yeah, less impactful things, though. Yeah, um, when you don't have... It, it's... It's tough, so you... So the reason to do it on two... I think at this point, after you've seen two elites and the druid, is just because you're afraid of combo. Yeah, but at the same time, you're right. He's, he's already seen two elites and druid, so a lot of the cards are already resolved that he cares about. Stony Silence already in play. Yeah, true. There's no getting rid of the Stony Silence. Ooh. That's a chord. 
yeah, Cordon 3. That's strong. Cordon 3 for Zuri. Yep. Regeneration, a good ability. Doesn't even kill the Mattery Shaper. It has the Pendlehaven up, so it could be kill or regen. I have to imagine it's regen. Yeah, giving giving Eldrazi decks more draws is usually a terrible decision. Yeah. Um... Sean, though, um, definitely hitting the brakes with the. In terms of the types of plays he can make, um, does Ghost Quarter the Pendlehaven? Okay. I, I mean, if just looking at this board state, Azuri and four lands, we're on the precipice here. Sean's at eight life. Yeah, we're closing in. Um, any land. Yeah, that's only one toughness up. So, he would need exactly a removal spell to to come back from that. And he obviously would have used that on the Azuri. Yeah. Rexage. Okay, Rexage on Chalice. So... He's attacking. attacking. Yeah, attacking here is really dangerous. Um, I mean, you do have some blocks up. The You don't really have to necessarily worry. The only thing that really gets Smasher here is if he has Smasher and draws Temple. Right. Because if he had Temple, it'd be in play. Yeah. So I, I do like attacking for just a very modest amount, just you know, holding back as much as possible. Like, this is a very safe number of creatures to be holding up, it looks like. So if near Deadlands he takes one, what could this be? Is it the Distended? Dismember. Dismember, okay. He doesn't take two because he has uh, the luck counter. That's what a sack. <laughs> so he falls to seven, though, and at this point, Azuri's regeneration becomes huge. He can safely Oh, he dismembers with... the Azuri. Um, oh, my, yeah, okay, um, my bad. But he still, though, um, I think still wisely not pushing with, the, with anything here. Um, at this point, like, you're really... If you start pushing with things, then your opponent can enact the mediocre beatdown plan. Mm -hmm. Plus, Devin has so many good draws in his deck. He has Cords, he has Cocos, Azuris, Archdruids, Spellskites even is fine. Yeah, Spellskite. Um, the, the ability to just plays the Mystic and passes. Um, I think... It's tough to say whether you want to attack in that spot. Yes, you do get decent attacks, but your opponent does get to brick, and you, you're you the one with the better top decks at this point. You're right. Draws? Any of, like, 12 cards? Temple Guard, not one of the 12. Thought Knot's going to get in, I think. It's interesting. Um, we do have some two-power creatures on the other side, so the Thought Knot blocks are a little bit better, but... We're getting to the point where if we keep going land after land, Deadlands might get turned on at some point. I mean, this elf deck has to draw one of its 12 cards at some point. That's one of the solid That's ones. That's one of them, yeah. Removal spell, though, mid-combat, right? Removal spell in mid-combat would be a blowout. Um, I, you know, definitely making sure what the, the best possible blocks here are, seeing what his opponent can do. Um, lining things up is always a good idea. Um, and now, if the Archdruid lives, um, on top of knowing your, your opponent does not have uh, anything in terms of removal, um, there's always way overkill as opposed to merely being close. Wow, so Smasher here from Sean. This is such a stalemate. This kind of thing you almost never see in modern. Yeah, even the uh, the Mimic um, gets that trigger from the Smasher, but what's it going to do? Just attack? And, yeah, no trample, yeah? Yeah, no trample. So, like, your good attack is, like, making them chump with their token? or It's so, tough to say what if there's even a good attack here. I mean... Wow. You have to wait one turn to Deadlands that Archdruid, I think. Yeah, getting the Archdruid down. Ooh, I don't know about running out the Rex Age. I, I like the idea of having another creature in play, but, the, but the boat... Jeez, this is the top deck war, man. Sky Sovereign comes into play, bolts the Archdruid. Now Sean has to have an attack. Yeah, that Rex Age. Um, I... 
I didn't want to say it like the second it came down, but. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, this dust. Handshake, my God. Devin, you were so close. It seemed like he was one, two, three points away, some number, any number of top decks away. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I have to say, I do like the no attack the turn that he played the Arch Druid. Um,. That he had enough blockers where he could get two good blocks in and then you're bricked for the rest of the game for attacks. But yeah, you give Eldrazi decks time and even though this Eldrazi aggro deck runs a little bit lower, it's got one of like all his dust for a reason. Sky Sovereign, all his dust, because if you get there, they just straight up win. I mean, the, the Sky Sovereign was enough. Yeah, what Sky is... Sovereign would have been enough. Um, like, it attacking as a flyer, um, they're probably, I mean... I don't know if life totals are exactly updated correctly, but it's a 6-5, and it looks like he was at 5, so wow. don't even necessarily need the all his dust there. So Sean moves on to the finals uh, with a deck that Jordan Boisvert would love, an Eldrazi aggro deck like he always likes to play with the Scourges and the Simeons and the Gemstones, the Jank Lord. Yeah, Sean is, is definitely someone... Um, who, in terms of his opinion, definitely beats to his own drum. <laughs> um, but a lot of people, I think this is something that's very indicative of, of especially modern players. Um, beating to your own drum, a lot of people might look at it as, you know, doing things not optimally. But in wide open formats where you can get little edges with your little decisions, he's still playing powerful cards. He's he's turn three in thought knots here. You know, he's. He's doing some some good stuff. Turn two that game. He he had it off the gemstone cavern and the spirit guide. That's insane. I still I can't believe you. I really thought the elf deck was gonna win that. Yeah, it it definitely looks um, really good for it on paper, especially with the the Eldrazi deck not playing ballista because it needs um, you know more aggressive creatures. But there's enough. Um, Value, I think, from the interaction plus the uh, the big boom boom is like the Sky Sovereign to, to get it done. Alright, so guys, we're going to end this recording and the next YouTube video is going to play. It's going to be the other semi-final.